it is Tuesday and I am substituting in for Rachel um, but it is Tuesday 7 at 7 so whether you watch it now or later uh, I hope that this is something that God uh, is able to use to speak to you and help you grow closer to him and just get stronger in your faith and knowing who you are more and more and more uh, based on what he says about you not based on what you think about you or how you feel about you it's based on what God knows about you so all these feelings and thinking and our opinions are subject to change uh, God's opinion God's knowing who we are is not subject to change it is 100% locked in and he already knows so much about you and who you truly are we just need to get closer to him to find out more about that um, that knowledge of who we are in his eyes amen uh, so thanks again for joining uh, I'm gonna start off uh, in 2 Corinthians 8 so we're talking about grace and um, hey Shirley hey Renika good seeing you guys on here uh, we've been talking about grace for the last month we're continuing that into August uh, I'm preaching this coming Sunday um, but I want to touch base you know pastor talked about our faith a good steward uh, of grace is based on you know us applying our faith so I wanted to talk about it because you know anytime there's grace of God that has been given we apply it with our faith but there has to be some sort of action that takes place so if you think about um, the children of Israel back in Old Testament when they were going into the promised land that promised land was given to them by God by grace they didn't earn it they didn't deserve it they didn't do all these great things for God and then he said okay since you've done these awesome things I'm gonna give this to you it was just given to them by God so he graced that to them so they what happened though is they never they didn't really apply any faith to it that's why they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and they struggled and they did all this stuff to finally a generation came along that said we believe what you have given to us basically we're going to oh, sorry mosquito attack my eyeball um, we're going to uh, believe that you've graced us so we're gonna use our faith to apply what you've graced us with and we're gonna take the promised land so this is in 2nd Corinthians 8 and this is out of the mirror Bible and this is Paul and he's he's really given a testimony about a group of people who have understood the grace of God and how they responded and then how what their response looked like so because um, there's some people that respond reluctantly and it doesn't look like they're all that happy about it and then there's some people that respond knowing what God has done for them and who they are in Christ and it's just it's fantastic so he says in verse 1 chapter 8 verse 1 and I put these on the uh, um, title part of this so hopefully you can see those uh, when this is done uh, but it says allow me to encourage you with this striking testimony of the grace of God evidenced in the churches of Macedonia so Paul's coming to the Corinthians and saying let me tell you about this testimony of the grace of God so God's grace has been poured out on these people so man you're thinking well wow, this is a great testimony this is gonna be awesome hearing about how blessed they are how healed they are uh, all these different things you're thinking this is just one fantastic bit of news after another so he goes on to say starts out with their mental metal was tested to the extreme well that doesn't sound like grace well let's keep reading it says they found themselves squeezed into a very narrow space yet in the depth of their poverty so let me just be clear when he says he's talking about a testimony of the grace of God poverty is not part of the grace of God and we're gonna see that clearly but some people take these scriptures and, and verses and things out of context and there's actually people that believe that if you're a Christian you should be poor that you should be in poverty and that's just nonsense so he says yet in the depth of their poverty their ecstatic joy led them into extravagant generosity they had dis discovered the conclusion of grace that's a great conclusion a great you know solution to find out what is the conclusion of grace it says no degree of poverty can separate us from our seamless oneness with one another because we're all part of the same body grace translates within us a wealth of liberality so Paul is saying that 
these people, although they had this great poverty, this great depth of um, lack and things that was attacking them and they, they just did not have any money, they didn't know what they were going to do, they came up to the conclusion that basically the grace of God, that no degree of poverty, no circumstance that you're facing, no situation you're facing can really separate us from one another and separate us from Christ. Paul talks about that in Ephesians, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Uh, so, and I've said this before, but grace is love in action. Love is just, is something that you, you feel you are, but grace, uh, God's grace towards us is that love for us that he has, and it's in action. So, they discovered the conclusion of grace. And you know what? It's funny to me, it's these people who are in such poverty, in such depths of despair, let's just say, that they, there was one thing he noticed about them. Their ecstatic joy led them to extravagant generosity. You know, in the midst of our situations, our contradictions, do we have extravagant joy? Or are we crying, moaning, complaining, uh, thinking God left us, or God's not blessed us, or God's not graced us with something, or he's graced somebody else more than us, or whatever. This is, this is saying the secret is during the midst of trials, during the midst of while everything looks negative, while everything looks horrible, what is the conclusion that you have? Are you, have you come to the conclusion that God's already graced you? Or are you coming to the conclusion that you're trying to get God's grace? Two, two very different conclusions to come to. If you believe that God's already graced you, you are going to have extravagant joy. You are going to have joy like no one has seen. You're going to dance. You're going to be excited because you know the conclusion of it is that you're going to see the fulfillment of that grace. So um, it looks like seven minutes. Wow, that was fast. Uh, anyway, I put those scriptures on there just for fun. If you want, you can read 1 Peter um, chapter 1 and you start in verse 3 and read down through about verse 9. So it talks about this as well. So one of the characteristics that Peter was writing to the people about was that how that they had joy inexpressible and full of glory. And it says that they would receive the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. And that salvation, sozo, health, wellness, uh, prosperity, uh, forgiveness of sins, redemption, uh, everything. So take a look at that. Just, you can read that on your own, no charge. Um, but I just challenge you to take a look at that and be full of joy. No matter what the circumstances are, no matter what the situations, we are people who should have a joy that is just bubbling over and flowing out of us. So that's what I got. Have a great night, guys. Thanks for joining 7 at 7. Bye-bye. Oh, like and share it. If you got something out of it, write down in the comments what you got, what it meant to you, and then share it to your friends and say what, what, what God showed you. So talk to you later, guys. Thanks. Bye-bye. That's right, Renika, before I hit finish, yes, that is the conclusion that you have come up with. I agree with you that nothing is going to separate you from God, nor his grace has poured out in your life. God bless you guys. Bye-bye.